Mr. Lou Arvin Sibal. Yeah! He uh, he's one of our uh, devs here at uh, Shield. He's a Ruby dev, but he actually started out as uh, a tech shifter. So when he joined Shield, he did not have Ruby experience. He worked very hard, and <laughs> now he's one of the best programmers of Shield. <laughs> I don't know if you can phone in Taman at the wall. Hi. Um, for some of you, this talk might seem familiar. So, during the last RubyCon uh, last March, I tried doing this as a lightning talk. So I did not manage to get my point across in five minutes. So I feel like, I felt like this was a good opportunity to explain myself more on what I was about to talk about. Okay, so uh, my talk will be about, well, never mind the V2. It was supposed to be for the devs here. So it's about a gem that uh, some of the devs in Shield has uh, have created last year. Uh, the actual starter of the the Lapis gem is not here anymore. is is Adrian, and uh, I've taken the reins for him. He work in peace. <laughs> no, he's still alive. He's in San Francisco. Okay. Uh, so this is the Lackey's gem. So uh, just a little background. Uh, this came out of necessity during uh, while working on our, our project in Shield. The the main the, the main impetus for it was uh, while develop. Uh, so th there was this time in Shield where we were focusing on one uh, major specific e uh, feature of the project, and. For the for the what six to eight months, there were lots of features coming in for that specific for that specific feature. So it turns out that one of our models was growing very fast. So we keep adding stuff to it all the time. Well, that that you know that that still works. We felt like it's starting to become unmanageable. So we wanted to uh, find a way to somehow you know refactor refactor some of the features of that model take it outside and in a and put it in a more you know a uh, more manageable uh, setup so of course I won't tell what the feature is so th this is Lackey's uh, behavior driven approach to coding Ruby objects uh, I, I thought of the name it came from the word Lackey which means a servant. It's a very fancy way of serving, say, saying servant. The main purpose is uh, it doesn't really add, you know, new functionalities to, the, to your to your Rails application. Uh, it just introduces a new way of organizing your stuff. So the main purpose is creation of new functionalities for Ruby objects with as little modification to the ma main object in question as possible. So here are the two GitHub pages. So CDAPA is Adrian's GitHub name, so that's the main one. Uh, our project is currently using that. So I forked over, uh, I forked my own uh, lackeys. So I'm doing the development from there. So of course I wouldn't want to, you know, commit straight to the to the development uh, to the one used by our project. So uh, the the uh, the approach for lackeys is uh, behavior driven. So you want features belonging to the same type of uh, service to be put in uh, one place and you know other features of the same object are put in another place it's sort of like modules but so we, we considered modules when we when we when we were trying to refactor the model in question but we wanted to find a more sophisticated way of uh, of ref uh, of dividing it because we feel like the the including a module in your uh, Ruby object uh, feels like cheating since you know it's just 
the, 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 the include is essentially copy pasting, you know, the, the stuff that you've created and then dump it, dumping it there. So, and well, what's more, it turns out uh, your, your object will keep adding those new includes so they, they pile up over time. So you wanted to find a way where you could add a new feature without little, zero, little to zero modifications on your actual object. So before, uh, I'll intru introduce the main concept of that and then I made a, you know, a small sample Rails application. It doesn't actually do anything, we'll just console it and then uh, inspect the objects that we've created using Lab. So we have the, some basic elements, so there's two main ones, the Rails, uh, Rails base. So we wanted, uh, we already originally wanted it to be uh, framework agnostic, but our project required stuff on Rails, so we made Rails base for it. Maybe in the future we could implement a uh, fra uh, framework agnostic version of uh, Lattice. Yes, I, I actually put that as an issue earlier in the GitHub page, in my GitHub page. A Rails base is the boss. That's the main object. So it's currently tied to Rails. And the main reason why we, we wanted the Rails base was to use the basic hooks of Rails for validations, active records, stuff like that. The service base are your lackeys. So you, for your main object would include the Rails base and that's all the modification you need for the, for the main object. For newer features, you implement one or more service bases that per service base, you have a set of features that uh, provide a certain kind of service for it. Uh, the service base, as I said, is the lackeys and they are perform as a specific function. If that sounds, you know, a little bit too abstract for you, I can show the full the example later. Uh, and then uh, it registers at least one serial space, obviously. So it's, it serves a master. Each service base only concerns itself with performing its own set of functions. So it doesn't know what other functions the main object does. Of course, it, it's, it's still possible to call objects, uh, to call methods of the object, or even methods of another service. Uh, Lackeys is able to do that. Like, like I said at the third point, uh, may rely on functions defined by other service base objects. So here's a sample Rails based implementation. It's pretty simple. It's just a uh, class named basic object. And then we include the lackeys Rails base and that's pretty much all you have to do with basic object. Even if you have a thousand new f services for it, that's the only thing you add in the basic object. So here is you know, your, your regular function called old function that just prints out a string. Now we define a new service, so it's our first service, basic object service, uh, it uh, subclasses the lackey service base. And here, the, the, first, few, the first three lines is the, the, the registration part. It says that basic object service will tie itself into the basic object, which we've declared as a real space. And then from here, we are exposing a function called new function. And then, which also prints a string. So it's, it's a very simple class. So now when you try instantiating it and then trying to call both old and new function, they would work as if the main object knows both of them. But in reality, the first one is defined in the actual object. The second one is, is uh, defined in a service and the object doesn't even, isn't even aware of the service existing. All right, so here's a quick uh, workflow of what happens when you try to call a method that is either defined in the object itself or in a service. So when, you, when an object, will be, uh, object calls a method message, it's passing an argument arg. So if object knows message, uh, meaning it's defined in the object itself, it just executes the the message, that's a typo, and then it ends as natu uh, naturally. Otherwise, it calls the registry, and then 
from there it queries if one of the services attached to the object knows the method. And then one of them will eventually pick it up and it, it is able to call the, the message from there. Otherwise it calls super and maybe uh, a parent object uh, knows the definition of the method fast. So the order is it checks for the its own instance methods, then it checks other services, only then it, it will call the super. So here we, this is you know uh, an extension of uh, the add method directives. So as you notice, we have the functions get value a, set value a, and then there's another add uh, another function, and we have the tag allow multi set to true. Excuse me, burping. What it what it does is uh, it this declares that another function is a valid uh, method of the service for basic object, but it also allows another service to define another function. So what it does when an instance of basic object calls another function, it actually calls both of them. And it returns values from both of them. Although in the current state of Lackeys, it's hard to know which one returned the, the value, so we for our usage, we didn't use them for the return value, we used them for something else. Uh, trivia, the, the reason we, we added that was for uh, logging. So we wanted to have a service for, let's say, feature X, and then we want to add another service that is in charge of logging the previous service. So we want them to be separate. We, we don't want a methods where in the log the logging is embedded along with the logic of the of the service, so we want to separate them. That's why we we define the allow multi. So this is going to be a bit confusing. So we define. I am switching slides here. There are two services, two A and two B. And then what it does is it just modifies. Uh, it just modifies the a value of the other one. So what happens is uh, you have an instant, a new instance of basic object test. You get value A, which is returning A. Get value B, which is returning B. Then you call C, and then this is the this is the return value I mentioned earlier. Unfortunately, you don't know which which service returned which value. So that's uh, that's a thing I might be working on in the future. And then after that, both both values of A and B have been modified to C. Despite, despite the values uh, being defined in separate services. As you notice, uh, service 2A and service 2B defined a, an instance variable value, which, is, uh, ha which has different values. So what happens is your basic, basic object, when they have uh, services, each service can instantiate their own, uh, on their own. So they have copies of uh, stuff on their own. Normally, the basic object doesn't have access to it. But so you can say that you know it's sort of like a protected, protected method, uh, wherein your values there are, uh, are safe. And what what's uh, what's good about it is it doesn't actually instantiate. Uh, the services doesn't actually instantiate until they need to. So when you first call a me method from that service, only then with, will it start to uh, will it start to instantiate. I can show that later. It's pretty much the same way with uh, with uh, calling multi methods. The difference is we have the commit. So what happens is it calls all uh, methods from all the services that are named in in our example another function. And then after all of those are called, it will call commit. Start, uh, it's sort of to wrap up things. So in, 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 our, in our project, you don't want to create the log until you save it. So what happens is when, you, when there's a feature X and then there's a, a separate service for logging feature X. Uh, so feature X does, it, does its thing and then the audit, the logging does its uh, preparing the log, but it doesn't save it yet. Only then when you call commit, 
do they finalize all the values? This one, uh, this one is uh, with an active record hook. So we declare get value A for yet another service, basic object service three, which is called after save. So it's possible to have an after save defined in a separate service. You don't have to define it in the object itself. And then it simply does the after save call. So after saving the active record object. It's pretty much the same. Uh, the, re uh, the registry, which is a uh, which is a class in the lackeys, defines call after save call back. So it it uh, it stores all the callbacks y we have de declared. They are declared at, uh, uh, when you start the application. There's a downside to it, which I'll show later. And then for each observer, it will call the after after save, and then it ends the loop. Uh, we'll talk about that later. So before that, I'll, I'll, I'll show you a sample application. So it's pretty much the same. We, it's that too small. Okay. So I defined a Rails application, like I said, uh, it, I, we can't, I, we can't use it yet. The lackeys with just a plain Ruby application, uh, Ruby application. So that's something we might work on in the future. Uh, since I declared it in the live, the active model isn't uh, uh, ex uh, included by default, so I added it. So I extended it, and then I added the lackeys to declare it as sort of the master object, and I defined a simple method called Hello World. So here, the, the person class, you know, I want to give the person some uh, abilities to cook. So I declare a chef service, not the chef that you usually get, you, you know. So here we give it a couple of functions. It, it's abil uh, able to cook spaghetti, stock up on spice, check how much spice do you have, and then what can I do? Initialize internals is a, uh, you, you, you can override it normally does nothing, but if you want some stuff to initialize when the service is instantiated, you could put it there. So what it does is just prepare sauce, which just, it just prints out some text, and it returns the string, here. Uh, here's some spaghetti. Uh, the, there's an instance variable called spice, which is set to zero, and you just increment it as you call stock up and spice, and then you can check how much spice do I have to check the number of spice you have, spices you have. When you call what can I do, it just prints out I can cook. You'll see what happens there later. I, I added, I needed to define this since I, def uh, I declared allow multi to true. We, I might, we might need to fix that in the future so you don't have to uh, define commit if you don't want. These one are at, uh, these functions are at exposed. So if you call the object, uh, the instance object, it couldn't call prepare sauce. So going to the console. So here. We define a person, me. We instantiate it as I've, uh, as I've demonstrated earlier. You can call an instance uh, method defined on the object itself. But also, you could call, uh, you could cook spaghetti. So it calls the prepare sauce method that you've seen earlier and the prepare pass that you've seen earlier and returns here some spaghetti. But you can call the prepare sauce since we didn't declare it in the registration. 
So let's try to look a bit inside. It's a bit complex, but I'll try to show what what I meant earlier when I said it doesn't it doesn't it's instantiate until you need it. So let's call a new uh, let's have a new instance of person. That is what the registry looks like when you first instantiate it. When you start calling, uh, so the uh, spice is now one. If you look at the registry, only then it starts to instantiate stuff, and then it. You, the, that object keeps that instance as long as the object is existing. So there. Now, let's say we want to add a new service. So, so now I could show you what it looks like when you try to add multiple services. So let's say you want the person to sing. So we just add. Hold on a second. Let's just add a new file here. So just copy stuff so it wouldn't be very take so long. So let's say let's call it Rockstar service. So you want the person to have Rockstar services. So let's keep the what can I do multi method and then uh, let's say same. Black hole sun in honor of Chris Cornell. Woo. Woo. <laughs> so it just returns a simple string again. But we want to add something else. We also want it to work spaghetti. I started the app. I'll tell you why later. So can I still cook spaghetti? Hopefully. Yes, I still can. Oh wait, I forgot something. Hold on. I forgot to save it. <laughs> That's very integral. Okay, I'm tied up. Okay. Okay, I saved it already. I keep typing that start. And now I just have to do something for now for. Make sure it's the So it's saturated again. I can still cook spaghetti. And I can sing the Chris Cornell song. So while you're singing, you're preparing some sauce and pasta, won't you come here some spaghetti? So there you go. And also, He can cook and he can sing. That's very impressive. Although the return values are are kind of garbage for now, you can't do anything with those. But at least for the commit part, you can do something with them. You could like you could do the same way I mentioned earlier, which is to define logging on a separate service, separating the logic from the actual uh, logging. So there you go. Uh, 
I was supposed to prepare a active record uh, demo for it, but I wasn't able to do it on time. So anyway, going back to the presentation. So this is still this is still a work in progress. Uh, at least for develop, uh, developing lackeys, there's still a lot to do for our project. It's kind of enough for, for now since we, we, we've, uh, we've uh, achieved our goal, which was to separate the services to, uh, uh, to separate the functionalities to multiple services. Although we've yet to refactor the, the big one. So now when we add functions, when we add features to that, to that model, we just add services instead of putting it on the on the model object, mo model file instead. So on the horizon, what are the possible things that we can add to Lackeys, or you guys can add to Lackeys if, if you want to check out the, uh, the gem and contribute to it. Uh, here, here they are. Uh, some of them are, might be outdated. I'm starting to add issues on the GitHub page, so I could start working on them. One of the major things that I was struggling with was the second one, the proper code reloading for lackey service-based objects. What happens is uh, the class, the singleton methods have uh, instance, uh, instance variables, and you store the mappings there. But when you reload code, the instance variables uh, get deleted. So you lose track of them. So I found a way for the rails to not explode the rails have to not explode when you reload it, but currently, when you put modifications on the service itself, it doesn't reflect the new function until you actually restart. Before, it, the, the, the whole thing just collapses, but now it doesn't. You still have to restart the, restart the app. And then the one I mentioned earlier is the fourth one, declare execution order registered multifunctions, so it's possible that you might want multifunctions to be executed in a certain order. Currently, we, you can't tell which one will be executed first. It's probably the first one that is, uh, the, the first one that is registered, meaning the first one that, the first object that is loaded when the Rails, Rails application starts. That's what is tend to be called first when there's a multifunction. Uh, yeah, that's it. Thank you. Yay. Ooh, is, there a, is there a performance hit when you add a bunch of... Yeah, I wanted to add that too, but I wasn't able to do that. Uh, at least from, from, you know, algorithmic point of view, it should be just ON. The, the, the finding of the new one, where n is the number of services. So as long as you don't, as long as the, the number of services registered to an object is it obscenely, you know, numerous, you shouldn't have a problem with that. Although, you know, we made it for active record objects. So if you want, you know, really computation intensive stuff, I'm not sure if this is the good way to uh, if Lackeys is a good uh, match for it. Do you have any more questions? No more. Uh, why inheritance uh, instead of composition? Oh, in, what do you mean, in the, this one? talked about that actually <laughs> but to be honest but that's that's how we envisioned it first maybe it's maybe at sometimes you don't want to to subclass it since you want maybe you want some other you want to reserve the subclassing for another class but that's how we did it right now. well at least in active record you don't want to be subclassing much anyway for models so we felt that it's safe to, to do that for uh, the service space and real space. Any more 